What is good? We're back. Ready to roll. Ready to roll! <laughs> Did that just for you. Boom. Two for your crew. We're rocking and rolling. We're going to get right into it tonight. We got our guy KJ over there. How you doing, bud? Hey, not too bad. How you guys doing? Good, man. And we got the, the tripod over here, so we're, we're officially quad podding. Where, where can we find you on Twitter before we get rolling, uh, KJ? So that's at... KJ the FFB Tech, so at the FFB Tech. Sorry, I totally oh. jacked up my own tag. All good, perfect. So today we got a little dynasty rankings, risers and fallers. Um, basically, just gonna go through the guys who uh, we think are moving up a little bit, and some guys who are moving down a little bit, like the yodeler on uh, the Price Is Right. Um, so. <laughs> First and foremost, I mean, I don't think anybody rises more this week than Devin A-Chain, Devon A-Chain. Achan, I think. Achan? Achan, I don't know. A lot Achan. of pronunciations okay. growing around with him. He's French. He's got an apostrophe. He doesn't have an apostrophe. I don't know. But him and Mostert got to be the biggest riser of the week, right? Well, A-Chain for Dynasty, of course. Mostert. A- yeah, A-Chain. Mostert's a, like you know redraft darling but i mean i I mean who's buying them in dynasty Uh, i mean i guess with the running back landscape it might not be the worst if you're you know a a semi-competitor team to to maybe go try to find some moster but we could talk to that point in just a second i I wanted to put one person up against a chain and moster here who might have had a hotter rise this weekend was it travis kelsey I mean, yeah. did, did, did he is he did he somehow rise higher with with Tay Tay in the box? I mean, sitting with his mom, he's he broke the internet, blew the Swifties are drafting him. That's for sure. That's right. He blew the, the th- if he was in a thermometer, he just blew the top off that bitch. There's mercury everywhere. Just, <laughs> so, but most let's go back to Mostert real quick. So nobody, you guys would all nobody would be interested in in buying Mostert in a situation where you're a contender right now or you're just too far away from the end is, or I just think I'm just the wheels could fall off literally at any moment because that's what so happens y- with Mostert yeah absolutely it, it's that if you have Mostert on your team you're likely already a contender so you're buying off a contender right so what what are you really spending for him is, is you're going to trade top tier talent for somebody who's performing for you right now but doesn't have the longevity especially at the position so that's that's a really tough buy right now. You know, I'd rather put all my chips in on a chain. Just seeing what I've seen now, I know he doesn't have the frame to to hold up to the workload, but still, that's definitely where I'm going. Yeah, but just the cost right now. Well, obviously, you can't. If you're not you a contender, you can't trade for you have any monster. You can't trade for either one of them right now. What, what like, kind of return would you want if you have monster and you're not a contender? This is a perfect time to ship him off. What right. can you expect to get back? Like you're probably not getting even a two. I mean, I think I think a two would be would be great, right? I mean, I'd, I'd pay a two if I'm a contender to get Mostert on my team, but I don't even know if I don't know if that would get it done. I think they would be a little exactly. greedy right now. Yeah, exactly. You'd have to figure out what that other piece is. Like, could you get a two? And I mean, you know, one of the Broncos receivers, like that's something that maybe you could like float. Like, I, I think that people are still not catching up to Cortland Sutton. So, I mean, I think if you're a contender or if you're, you know, if you're rebuilding, it's it's really tough. Most it's in that flux spot where you're probably not going to get enough to feel good about selling him, but you're really not going to want to pay what he's going to cost to get him. Yeah, it's it's certainly a, a tricky spot with Mostert. And, 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 you know, I think part of it is, is that we haven't seen a full season from Mostert. So it's it's hard to really go in right now. Now, if, say we're in week 13 and Mostert's still getting this usage and we're heading into the playoffs. And then maybe we say, you know, F it. Let's let's F, uh, F it. Let's let's, yeah, if, let's grab if some. If you're Mostert. late, I mean, and you're a playoff push, then and, and you think you're a top three team, then w- you're you're pushing the chips in anyway, right? So you right. want somebody like that who can bang out three TDs on a week, right? And you selling them if you haven't been redraft. Had some good catches. I, I mean, and I don't. I have a hard time with the with the with the redraft. It's I feel like trading and redraft is so hard to pull off. Which is why when someone comes to me in the comments, which please do. If they have like a legitimate trade that they're like, hey, I got an offer, like I'm like usually like take it because redraft? redraft, yeah, because like who cares? And with all these lower level player players that you literally scoop mustered up in the la- last rounds or off the waiver, you know, or paid a dollar for them in an auction. I I was in an auction, I had a dollar, and someone was like, you know what, I'll go too, and I was like, rats. 
and <laughs> missed out on monster. I didn't have another dollar to go. It was like we were filling out the end of our roster, right? So if you want to flip him for something, because you, <laughs> he's probably gonna his leg is gonna blow off at some point, right? I mean, history can't. would say so, but I mean, it's, it's I would take hate to count decent. on one, but I would take something decent to turn him into a more stable player, maybe. Would you? Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, are you? How about how about Deontay Johnson, who's on IR right now, but could come back? Not anymore. In redraft. In redraft. Yeah. You need, you need more. In redraft. Yeah, I yeah. want more. Okay. Because yeah. you have no idea what he's coming back to. Sure. Hit us in the comments. Let's let's go over to A Chain. All right. Well, the A Chain side of things. I mean, I don't. I don't think. <gasps> I don't think you can trade for A Chain after this week. You got to hope that yeah. it cools off, and next week we go back to not scoring the showing black and white photographs of the last time they scored seventy fucking points. Um, you know, and we go back to you know five or ten points for A Chain, and we maybe can you know shoulder injury get a conversation going. But what what do you think right now? Obvi- let's let's shoot down a couple couple weeks down the road a chain goes back to just being you know probably in a in a committee which is essentially what we think this will be i don't i don't think a chain necessarily stole it most are crushed it too we don't have jeff wilson ahmed was ahead of a chain before the injury happens we kind of figured that this would be you know some sort of a timeshare split which is why all these guys were down lower uh you know to some extent in redraft and and dynasty for that that part and and the a chain part was you know maybe we weren't sure how he was going to hold up and then you know right off the rip a little banged up after a good run in preseason so what what are your thoughts and and a potential price tag for a chain kind of moving forward here so the the problem is that most people uh paid a high two to a low first to mm-hmm. get a chain on the right. team in the first place right so this is this is just confirmation to what they spent up for mm-hmm. so i i think buying a chain is going to be very difficult, especially when we know just how invested um, McDaniel was in getting him. Like, I, I don't know if you guys ever saw the, the the actual live video of when they drafted him, when McDaniel just like pounded the table and just like oh, they got pound into the table. It. Let's go. Oh man. <laughs> uh, so uh, he, he fits this offense to a T like they want speed. They want creativity. They, they want, you know, to, to be able to utilize players in multiple ways. And man, I, I want to buy a chain, but I'm terrified of the price. Uh, if you can get him, I mean, I'd at least entertain it. But I mean, what can you actually get him for? Right. Right now, it's probably unobtainable. But yeah. I mean, like you right. said there, that is a whole lot of fun. I said, I don't know if it was on this show or on the Patreon show that I was buying Mostert last week because he hadn't kind of done anything yet. And he was, uh, you know. The way they were running their offense right now looked good. The way Moser was running the offense looked really good. A chain and his very limited role had had been explosive. The running back play just looked as a whole like it was going to be really good uh, coming out of this offense, which we knew it could be. But last year it was kind of a little clunky. They didn't run it a ton. It looks a whole lot uh, better this year. That offense just looks absolutely ridiculous. Obviously, too is healthy uh, right now, and and like you said, it's speed, speed, speed. It's you know everyone saw the graphic by now. The top five fastest players this year are Dylon, Dylon, and Dylon. Yeah. It's Miami Dolphin, Miami Dolphin, Miami Dolphin. Oh, uh, Jerry Judy was on the was on there as well. Did he make the list? Yeah, so, he was four. But, really? But that's, that's uh, me. you know, they 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 want to play with speed. So you know, a chain. Let's. Uh, uh, would you trade a first and Kyron? Yeah. Yeah. See yeah, I do that. See you, Kyron. Uh, how about a first and Joe Mixon? Oof. Uh, how about Joe, let's go just Joe Mixon first? That's I, a better question. Up. Joe Mixon, yeah, yeah, I would. I guess you uh, this week you have to. You throw the yeah. first in. I can't. wouldn't. No, no that, that's can't. too much. That's too much, uh, yeah. especially when you're talking about an RB that that can actually handle a workload. I mean. Let's bump the brakes a little bit just because A-Chain still had a 41% snap share. You know, right. this and, was and, just and garbage time work. Too. Had some good scores yeah. and when they were when it was close, but then you know b- broke some half off of when it was 54 came in the second. Sure. <laughs> Which I think is you know kind of wait half of his points. Kind of what I was alluding to when we first started talking <laughs> that it will be a timeshare. We probably do need to pump the brakes a little bit here. And and you know, he I don't think right. he's just gonna all of a sudden be the guy who gets, you know, 20 carries with he doesn't need with it, them. Though. They're they're gonna they're seemingly gonna be the team that that splits up the carries kind of regardless of who is and who isn't healthy. And and Jeff Wilson's kind of lurking in the background. Not that a chain doesn't deserve to be the second guy off the bench or maybe even the first guy off the bench, but it seems like they'll keep a rotation. So I think 
general sentiment should probably should be pump the brakes. Let's wait a couple of weeks. And yeah, they play Buffalo next week. So you might have a good entry. Right. I mean, if they wanted to come down a little bit. Right. If we get back in the five to 10 points for a couple of games here, um, you know, we might be able to kind of revisit and and say, you know, maybe Kyron and a two can get me because the Kyron usage is a little more, you know, uh, looking sustainable where a chains is kind of all over the place. Obviously it's dynasty uh, from what we're mostly talking about here. It could be applied and, you know, redraft, but you know, we're just not going to use picks in that, that regard. And I always, I always think that redraft trades are, are pretty tough to pull off. Um, they really are. You have to have a really active league right. to, to actually get a redraft trade done. Or the whole league's going to be mad because some, somebody, you know, made a, made a boo-boo. Uh, a chain yeah. or Miles Sanders. Hey, Jane. We're moving them up. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess I would, I would take the flyer on A chain at this point. I'll take the ceiling. Yeah, A chain or Damian Pierce. A chain. I'll stick with Damian Pierce there. I'm, I'm terrified of what's going on with Pierce right now. What? That you didn't see his yeah. last game. We'll, we'll, I, we'll, I saw his last game. We'll, we'll get to it. Uh, not in this segment, but it'll be a different video. Uh, but we'll, we'll talk about it a little while. What do you rub Pierce. your hands together for? What um, <laughs> I mean, Pierce is about to have disagreement. About to be good. How about I was gonna say? Well, J.K. Dobbins is out of there. He wasn't Chubb's even the leading there. rusher on his own team this past week. What about? Thank you. Well, we could. That's does. That's completely irrelevant. It was forty-four yards. It's totally relevant. <laughs> it's completely irrelevant. He uh, played literally every okay. meaningful snap possible in that game, just like every other game, which is where sometimes usage reports are irrelevant. They're how, they're missing four offensive linemen. Hasn't stopped. C- Do C-J you Stroud. understand that? Hasn't like, stopped CJ Stroud. They're, What's the problem? They're missing four offensive linemen. Like, <laughs> let my confirmation bias just let him do his thing. Okay, it's crazy. All right. Um. How about um? Let's let's I'm throw one more out there, here. Or Achon. It is Achon, by you. the way. Javante Williams. Uh, I'm sticking with Williams. Ooh, yeah. I'll, I think I'll stick with Williams there. Just, uh, but it's it's very close. That's kind of where the line is for me. Yeah. So Ramondre, Pollard, Javante, all that that yeah, all is too, too about rich. Ramondre. Ramondre now, might be. Yeah. Ramondre might be with Javante <laughs> right now. I'll stick with Ramondre. Everybody hates those guys, so it's easy. To pick, take this A chain, I'll stick with her. Put it around your neck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, most are your RB one right now. And with, you know, with thirty, with thirteen, twenty five, and forty five, it just keeps getting better, like a fine one. And A chain's like RB four right now, with yeah. like with with one week basically. Fifty. Uh, so you know that'll be inflated. That'll be inflated for most of the year. So well, if you take away a sixty seven yard run, yeah, let's um let's keep it moving here. Uh, let's let's go to the next riser uh right now i really rising up the tight end ranks we'll go sam laporta uh currently tight end two he had a game of 8.9 11.3 and then this past week 22.4 um 18 receptions is the most for a rookie tight end through three games uh this week he was had 11 targets eight yards for 84 on a touchdown and uh a, a really high market share up high high 20s low 30s or a target share rather um you know, so really, really starting to put a stamp on it now. St. Brown came into this banged up. Josh Reynolds came into this banged up. Zero um, targets for Josh Reynolds this week. Yeah. Um, Brutal. Well, obviously, we're missing Jamison Williams in this. No, no Monty. Um, no Monty. Banged up. I'm sure you yeah, it. we said that. Uh, but so Laporta has to be rising up the ranks. How how high is Laporta going in your tight end ranks uh, right now? Is he is he top five? Has he passed Goddard? So he, he has passed Goddard. Absolutely. I, I think he has to at this point, uh, just because we've only seen increasing usage. His snap share did come down just a little bit. He was just, he was above 80% for first two games, came down to 74, not really a huge deal, no. uh, but his targets went up, but I do think that that was situational. So I, I, I think that there was, you know, ARSB, he was banged up. I think they, the other receivers banged up. They were leaning on Gibbs and he really wasn't getting it done on the ground. So, you know, I, I think he's going to eat in those games. If that can continue to be something for him, then he's going to just continue to skyrocket. But I think we'll see him level off over the next couple of games. But he's untouchable on my teams. You're not coming to get him. Yeah. I mean, would you swap him for Kincaid? Ooh. Um, Obviously not. I, not Kincaid hasn't quite got there, but the everything for Kincaid, all the percentages and usages, they, they shot up in one way for Knox, but they're right. kind of starting to level back down. I think it'll come around a little bit. They obviously just blew the commanders out. I think Kincaid will figure a role out and have a role here, uh, you know, middle end of the season here, 
you know, obviously everything right now is uh, super. Hey, this just happened. So it's all reactionary, you know, and this, and this is going to happen forever. Too. In season dynasty is, is becomes a lot yeah. more of a, like redraft than I oh, think a 100%. lot of people like to admit. Uh, so, and, yeah, absolutely. And, and this is where, you know, the people who are actually projecting versus just looking at stat boxes and, and going off of what we've done can benefit is because sure. you can take Laporta, which is granted, like, it's really hard to move off him now. He, he's, you know, he's hot fire. He is the new hotness, but you can take Laporta and turn him into Kincaid plus probably right now. And that's something that not anybody was touching coming into this season. They said right. it was Kincaid and then everybody else. And now you could probably get, you know, Kincaid in a two. You know, you can add capital on top. Yeah. Is that something you are doing? Um, I'm I'm kind of fine with it. I liked both guys a good bit. So I'm, I and I also like Mayer as well. Like I liked all three guys. Mayer Thought you scored, had to take yeah. Kincaid before Mayer did not score. He didn't. Uh, or if no. or if Laporta is like the main thing on your team that's producing right now, and you feel like you're slipping into a rebuild quickly, you can turn him into Musgrave plus plus plus. Right. Yeah. So that would you know if you want to go down, I'd go down. Um, yeah. But you know, would you go? Would you go up to try to maybe get Hawkinson, turn Laporta into Hawkinson in some way, shape, no. or form, or are you just staying in Pat here? I'd I'm standing that. with Laporta. Really. Yeah, I'd entertain it. I mean, what? Let me go get. It's got to cost you a decent amount because I don't. He's got to be tight on one or two currently for most that's, people. So that's do the you problem. Just I have. keep the money yeah. and say we'll go. We'll go explore something else. Yeah, it's just I, I think that you're going to have the same floor. Uh, honestly, between the two players, maybe Hawkinson might have a higher ceiling. But honestly, I'm kind of worried about what Minnesota is going to do now with the start they've had, and see if they maybe want to shake stuff up a bit. They're not committed. Uh, they're not committed to Kirk Cousins. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm curious if maybe if this trend continues, they've had some tough games. They've stayed in them. The defense is terrible, and they could obviously they could ship Kirk. Honestly, I, I think it's not outside of the realm of possibility that he could be on the move to the Jets in a trade. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something that you start thinking about a little bit. Like you said, they've been in a lot of those games. I mean, every one of them could have went their way, and they didn't. Last year, they did. This year, they haven't. Uh, the Eagles game, Jefferson fumbles out of the end zone. Who knows how that game changes, yeah. If you know, which is the worst rule maybe in football. Um, and, you know, the, the Bucks game, they... You know, they lose that one, which nobody saw that coming in this Chargers game. They could have easily won that one as well. It's just not going that way. I, I would assume they'll get some wins and say, hey, we're going to keep Kirk. I don't know why Kirk would want to go to the Jets. I think he has a no trade. So like Their why, line sucks. why would you want to go there and then and then try to become a free agent? I think I would just stay in Minnesota. But it is something that you that you that you think about. And, and even, you know, Jefferson owners might have to be a little nervous come end of the season or, you know, around the trade deadline about what happens. Uh, just in redraft, I guess. And for the rest of the season, if you have a competitor, um, mm. you know, might might be a, a little bit of a worry. But, you know, so if that but if that is the case, then you say, all right, well, I'm going to take the L for, you know, half a season with, you know, Jefferson and Hawkinson, who's now tied to them for a while. And we're probably getting, you know, Caleb Williams or, you know, because if we're trading, we're, we're, we're bad right now. If we're going to a backup quarterback, we're probably not winning another game. And our D isn't going to keep us in there like, the, you know, the Jets per se would um, in a lot of yeah. games. So certainly interesting uh, conversation right there. Uh, but so what would you pay to go from Laporta to Hawkinson? I mean, I, I just see what, what it would take. Uh, yeah. I could send the two just to see if there's even a conversation and it's going to take more than that. Maybe I got a player. I would, I would entertain it because I think I'm past like worrying about Kirk cousins and, and the rest of this team, because you know, people were avoiding Addison because what's going to happen with Kirk cousins next year. Like, oh man, who knows? It could be a better situation. It could definitely be worse. There's no way we can know any of that shit. I'm going to get the town, you know, yeah. and Hawkins is locked up. He like, they didn't have someone Someone got knocked out of that game, I think, and like he he was like all they could do at the end was like they were just Jefferson cramped him. up at one point and was getting stretched yeah. out on the field. He did come back in, but it was just like he yeah, just, there's just a, so many catches, like so yeah, the volume is insane, and and if it's tight end premium, I mean he is just racking it up right now. Which we're usually talking tight end premium, right? So I I, I would explore it. You know, I get not wanting to give up too much and being fine keeping Laporta, but. Laporta and a one to get Hawkinson tight end premium. Seems. KJ says no. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of a it, late it'd be one. Close. I'd have to be like a get the two back. 
Right. Get the three back. You, you've get seemingly you like. already gone through the growing pains with Hawkinson where we had some injuries and we were figuring some stuff out and he got traded and now he's ready to get the vault. They're, they're, fi- they're going to give him the volume. You know, I don't think it, like you said, I don't know that it matters who the quarterback is. They're going to pass the hell out of the ball. That's what the, as long as the head coach is there running, O'Connell is running the show. I think that's kind of what they're going to be doing. Um, you start with the two. If they send you the one back, you know you've got an interest, and you mm-hmm. can try and find something between that. You know, gotcha. Uh, I mean, you're just you're paying a premium to go from tight end two to tight end one. I, yeah. I, but I mean that that's really my only stance three there. tight end two. You know, I mean, okay. Um, <laughs> but I mean, so Hawkinson had 11 targets. You know, Laporta also had 11 targets. Yards per catch has been higher for Laporta and trending that way over multiple weeks. For Hawkinson, it's been kind of steady. Um, but I mean, obviously, he had the two touchdown game last week, so you can't really be too upset about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know. I just think you're paying a premium to move off of an asset when really, I think on any given week, I think they're both very solid. And so I don't, I just don't see the urgency to move. Yeah. All right, let's keep it moving here because um, we're, we're just have rolling. some urgency to move through this. Yeah, yeah. we're just rolling here. <laughs> um, all right, let's go. Uh, let's go. Kenny Walker. He's He's got to be maybe rising up a little bit. Maybe oh, he's a yeah. self. I don't know, but he has surely risen uh, above the cluster. I think he was in and especially in our preseason ADP. Uh, I think some of the doubts were a little have been a little bit, you know, put to bed here. He's had some put in some nice fantasy performances RB three uh, and without his two starting tackles. Um, and I believe they might've even lost a guard in this game. I don't know if he came back or not, but coming in an RB three right here with, you know, the best work of the season on this Sunday's Panthers game. Uh, he went 18 attempts for 97 yards, two scores whilst catching all three targets uh, for 59 yards. Don't let him fool you. Kenny Walker good? can catch. It's three for three um, for 59. Is that good? The yeah. PR? Uh, but you know, Sharps, oh. Charbs, you know, kind of gets a little bit more of a role. Yeah. It was all of his carries uh, were in garbage time for the most part. Five of his attempts uh, came in the fourth quarter uh, while Seattle was up big. But nine for 46 looked good out there. Uh, but, you know, the big thing was uh, him taking a lot of the two minute, all the two minute. He had, you know, all 10 of the two minute snaps. And now, again, some of that is probably because they were up big there in the second half uh, for sure. Uh, but, you know. Coming in and, and DJ Dallas still holding on to some of that third down work, but DJ Dallas's <laughs> pie is is slowly you know diminishing and Sharbs is slowly eating it up. Um, so we're we're starting to get into the territory of what we might have thought was going to be in the beginning of the season, just taking a little while longer to maybe get there. Uh, for sure, uh, g- could be top fifteen upside if there was an injury to Kenneth Walker here, uh, but I don't know that Kenneth Walker is going to relinquish his position without an injury. So. Uh, you know, what's your thoughts on on Walker here? I am sad that I thought Charbonnet was going to cut in early because uh, Walker definitely is somebody I wish I had more of. And he's done nothing wrong to relinquish the role at all. His snap share came down. But like you said, it's just because it was garbage time. And that's the only reason Charbonnet cut in at all. Um I'm, I'm buying, you know, it just depends on if you have a, a, a team that's actually worried that Charbonnet's increased snap share this week is a sign of things to come. If they're just stat box watching, mm-hmm. uh, then you can maybe work something out there. But yeah, he's he's a solid, you know, I think he's a bottom uh, RB1. Uh, he, he has to be for at least the rest of the season. If not, you know, he could even be better than that. But yeah, I'm I'm buying. Let's just put it that way. If I can actually make a reasonable trade to get him, I'm doing it. In fact, I'm working a trade for Walker right now. Nice. So so he was kind of in a in a bit of a cluster there with with the uncertainty of of you know in that you know fourth fifth round. Uh, he was kind of in the third round there early and often, and then as things went and Charbonnet came in, kind of everything got bunched up. He thought, hey, this is going to be a high end RB two, and now we're looking at maybe low to mid end RB one. He's the RB three right now, uh, and again, like I said, their tackles are but you know their rookie tackles from last year both have uh, you know unfortunately been out. Uh, so. You know, I would would you trade Walker for I mean Pollard? I want Walker. That's pretty easy to me. I mean, Pollard really? you definitely get you get four years age, I think, difference. So that's a massive or I mean Charbonnet is going to work in at some point. I mean, you can't say he's not with the draft capital they gave. Sure. Going What's to gonna happen to Pollard next year, you know? I I, I that's Pollard, true. I think, is a great one year deal. So in redraft, if you want to make that move, I'm I'm that's I'm fine with that. But with Kenneth Walker, I mean, we've seen this with the Seahawks before, okay? And it wasn't the same 
not necessarily the same, but they had a really good guy in Chris Carson, someone you saw on yeah. the field play well. Then they go and draft a first round running back, and Chris Carson was still the guy, and they and and they couldn't ever get this guy that they brought in and they wanted to work. I'm not saying Charbonnet is a shot penny. I love I love I love Charbonnet. Loved him coming out of college, and I think he will work in for sure. But Kenneth Walker is just that dude. Like he's just fucking awesome. Yeah, and I love the talent. I'm just gonna I'm gonna take the four years age difference I think with Walker over. Yeah, I'm going Walker Pollard. too. Really? Yeah. Two? Well, the the interesting thing about it is that RB. I mean, can you really project past one to two years at the position at right. all? Like, right. can can you really do that? Because I mean, we know I, that I think, Walker's gonna be there with Charbonnet for the next two to three years, right? And who knows what that's gonna look like? You know what I right. mean? Like, it could I, be I, all Walker all the. T- you know what I mean? And just they they got Charbonnet because of what happened last year. Like, hey, we didn't have you know a running back to do anything with, so we're not gonna let that happen again. Um, and I do think I like think 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 like you said that there is it's coming at some yeah, point that there will I be agree. certainly a split. We're seeing a split for the most part, but Walker's the guy. There isn't a back in the league for the most part that isn't you know splitting some majority of snaps at, at some spot here or there. Right. Yeah. The say, days say of the workhorse name. running back have definitely say come to James a close. Connor. James, James fucking Connor. James Connor. James yeah. fucking Connor. <laughs> James Connor crushing. Um, to beat cancer and every second string running back on the team. That's right. Um, and every defender that comes at him. But, you know, Pretty Pollard will be interesting. You know, will he's getting a ton of attempts, you know, and they've they worked Rico in this week. So it'll be interesting coming off that injury with Pollard. If if a whole what, what a whole season of this amount of work kind of looks like for Pollard. He's been great. And they're they're down some offensive linemen in Dallas right now. Uh, as well and obviously coming off a loss to the Cardinals but Pollard's been uh, really really solid um, that that's a tough one I think you know I think if I'm I'm right r- ready to win now and I could I could swap Kenny for Pollard maybe I would do it just it feels better for the year as for my team to compete and I don't think that that Pollard's gonna die I think he got two two more years or so with Pollard to, as, a, as a high-end player regardless if he's in Dallas or not um, so I think I think that could be a swap for me that I might make, especially if somebody's feeling like, you know, obviously if you're looking stat box watching or whatever and, you know, Kenny Walker's RB3 right now and you're liking what's happening with him and you're saying, well, maybe you know, I'll get younger like Jason's saying, maybe you could even get certain people might get a little something on top for Pollard. I don't you know, I don't know that that would be the case in most uh, situations, but. So you'd probably have to one for one it, man. Right. And honestly, it's the only thing that holds me back is the fact that Pollard has like 10 target upside. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. he had eight last week right. and that's crazy for a running back. So if you're in any kind of PPR league, that's the difference maker to me. Uh, while Walker, I think all year, his, his top amount of targets is five in week one. Yeah. Five targets a week one. So not bad, but you right. know, we, we haven't seen that be sustainable for him ever. Uh, so I, I'm curious, you know, they're still working in DJ Dallas, like you said. So I don't think the targets are ever going to be the lion's share for Walker. So PPR, you know, it's firmly Pollard for me. Uh, if it's half or if it's standard, if you're still playing in an ancient, Ain't nobody doing that, uh, <laughs> get rid then, of it. Then Walker takes it. Yeah. Get rid of the half point leagues too. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's yeah, keep so it moving. I'm let's do, couple, I've been half point league. Get rid of them. We'll do one more yeah, longer conversation and then a couple more rapid fires. Let's, let's go with Jerome Ford. Obviously rising up a little bit this week. Uh, we could talk a little bit about sustainability here and what we think moving forward. W- would you be buying or selling a little bit, but certainly rising up the ranks here because, you know, they played a tough run defense here. We, we and, and the way I think Cleveland played this was was they kind of knew what it was. They knew where their strength was and they kind of went away from it. They didn't necessarily try to say, hey, we're going to be stubborn and try to ram it down the Titans throats here. Uh, they they, they kind of, you know, I thought they had a good game plan. Deshaun played his best game as a Brown uh, looked great. The rushing floor for, for Deshaun, uh, it seems like, you know, it'll keep him a very viable fantasy option all year if, if he's not playing to the level he just played to. Um, but you know, four, 10 attempts, 18 yards, one touchdown, three targets, uh, two receptions, 33 yards and a touchdown. And then Kareem hunt, obviously coming in, not your average guy who's coming in to, to replace somebody because he has long history, uh, with them. So the work in should, you know, thinking be, a, you know, a little quicker first game in there, five attempts, 13 yards, two receptions, uh, three targets, 22 yards. There was a time when it seemed like, Kareem Hunt pretty much got all the goal line work for uh, for for the Cleveland Browns there two years ago. And then last year, it seemed to kind of fade away and they seemed to fall out of favor with Hunt. Um, But it really worked out for him. Uh, 
you know, to really get himself a spot back on the Cleveland Browns this week. So overall, what, what's your impressions of Ford and, and uh, kind of what you're doing with, with the player? Cause I've been in, I've, I liked what I saw from him in that first game with the Steelers. And, and, and even in this game where the box score isn't impressive, kind of what you saw on the field gave you an idea that there's, you know, some explosive plays in here. They're a good running team when they're not playing, you know, a really tough opponent like uh like Tennessee, as far as run defense goes, um, and and Ford fairly pretty much dominated all, all the all the snaps in you know every facet here on early downs you know twenty nine to to Kareem Hunt's ten and then you know some no backs and some Pierre Strong Jr. but Pierre Strong really came in in garbage time when they were up big goal line going to Jerome Ford um, short yardage going three two uh, two to Jerome Ford again, Pierre Strong working in, I think a little later in the game, third down seven uh, for Jerome Ford to um, none, well, what, two for Kareem Hunt. So uh, ideas on Ford moving forward. So, I mean, I'm feeling out the price. Uh, I'm not selling. I'll tell you that. I'm trying to add if if somebody's willing to, uh, because I, I believe his snap share didn't increase like exponentially, even with really a new RB in the system. I mean, not a new one because they've had him before, but they're showing that they trust him in crucial situations. And I mean, two touchdowns against what was regarded as the best Russian defense coming into it. I, I don't think that's anything to really just poke a stick at and say it was terrible. I mean, the 1.8 yard for carry was not good. Sure. And if you <laughs> take away that big run in week two, then he didn't really have a good week two either. So, but also if we take away all the best plays. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> also just, you know, their defense has prevailed in the early half of fantasy football this season. The defensive lines are just better than the offensive lines at this point in juncture in football. Um, and it's, you know, the, the Browns have one of the better O lines, but they're, they're missing, uh, you know, some pieces already. And, and Pittsburgh was a tough feat week one and, or week two. And Jerome Ford came in there and had a good game. And now you played Tennessee and he still managed to not ruin your fantasy day. Essentially no, I made mean, a great so, play on the wheel route and Deshaun and, hit him. Absolutely. He's getting some work in the receiving was game. a wide receiver in high school, I believe. So he already yep. beat out Kareem Hunt for the roster spot, you know, so I'm not like super worried about where he, Kareem Hunt. They need Kareem Hunt now. Whether I think or not some of that was cost related too. Whether or not yeah, sure. it was money moves. Whether or not you're but nobody paid Kareem Hunt. Right. For sure. I'm not, for sure. He was holding I mean? out for a deal, man. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> I think Cleveland, man, they if there's one thing I learned from watching most of that game is that Cleveland's defense is absolutely dirty. Like they're yeah. just Legit. They just gave up nothing. My, having Miles Garrett helps. Poor Ryan Tannehill. And Zadarius Smith on the other side. Yeah, I, mean, I think that was really underrated. Darius, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, that kind of went under the radar, it felt like. Yeah. Well, if he's not hurt, he's amazing. Uh, yeah. Beast. As yeah. a Green Bay fan, trust me, I, I freaking yeah, love Zadarius Smith. Yeah, dude. He used to, yeah. Man, did he flash when he was healthy. He just couldn't couldn't really stay oh, healthy. Boy. Is anybody flat out selling for I'm here? down to sell Ford. I mean, I, he's just, he's like the guy in the good situation. And, and I don't know if the talent. I guess there's there's definitely some talent there, but if 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 you're competing, right? If you're trying to win and you're not in a rebuilding mode, it's tough to sell any running back because people are just needing running backs. It's all, they're just dropping like flies. So I have him in on Jay's grand team, and Jay's grand team's ready to go. I, I'm glad I got Ford because I just lost Mike Williams, and for I, I plugged Ford because I lost Aaron Jones the week before, and I'm gonna be riding Jerome Ford. I'm not selling him unless I can upgrade running back spots, maybe. You know, I'd be down. Yeah. I'm down to, to try and upgrade the running back spot with Jerome Ford. But I, yeah, I just feel like people are, are more willing to sell than they they are uh, to hold and see what even is because they, they, everybody pretty much that has Ford right now is looking to sell. Yeah, well, you're uh, going to get wanna, some money. You know, you just made money because you had Ford. We've been big proponents of Ford. Got Ford on some taxi squads all over the place. Traded back into the fourth rounds. Get some. Get a little bit of Ford. Held him through nothing his rookie year, and look how soon that paid off. Just like bam, which is super unfortunate because it's a huge bummer with with Nick Chubb. But yeah, I've, if I've I if I'm a rebuilding, I'm looking to turn some money. If I'm rebuilding, I I mean, what are you selling for? You know what I mean? What because I don't think that anybody wants to buy on what most people will think they can get out of him. They're going to try to get, you know, something pretty serious because he's a running back. He's healthy. He's actually playing. He's actually getting touchdowns, which is something that, you know, across the RB landscape is seemingly hard to come by. Right. So you're hoping you're uh, selling to the Nick Chubb owner uh, or somebody else right. who had a running back that isn't performing right now or has, you know, a banged up running back 
which half the running backs in the league aren't performing right now. You know, it's guys like Jerome Ford and Kyron Williams and A Chain and Mostert who are, you know, crushing and, and right now. Can we sold Kyron for Godwin in it too. Yeah. You we, know, we, we just sold if Kyron for Godwin. If you can do something Godwin like that with, with Ford on Wait, a rebuilder. You sold Kyron for Godwin in a two? To the Chubb owner. They offered that trade to us. We just were like, I don't know if I would give up. I don't know if I would give up Kyron straight up for Godwin. Wait, and then throw a two on wait, top of what? it? The other way around. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, Casey. Seeping in there. You are. You're, <laughs> I don't know that I I would give that up Godwin for five Kyron. Ten, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> right. We were like, should we go try and get Godwin? And I was like, let's fucking ask for a two. Or he was like, maybe we ask for a two. I was thinking that. He said it. And I pulled up our app, and well, it we was said it offered on the to Patreon us. show last week. I was like, I think I got Kyron. I might ask this guy for I think Godwin. This guy might too. be listening to us on the Patreons. Maybe. And uh, and then he came out. We tried to then we tried to get Ayuk in a two, uh, but then he and turned he it said down. Ayuk in a, he wanted a three from us to get so, Ayuk. But yeah, we just turned that in. So you know, Ford, the you know Ford Ayuk goes out there and has another good couple of games. You might be able to turn him into something. Or I mean, would you trade him for two twos to the Chubb owner? Yes. Or would I send Ford for two twos? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'd do that. I would send yeah. them to any owner, but just, just so we're clear, not yeah. just the job owner. Right. Well, sure. I mean, I just coming at him because of that. You know, hey, two you two good weeks. You get one more week. You're, right you're probably getting a first for him. You might wait one more week. See, the I, pro- mean, I think the I, problem I with I don't know if you're ever going to get a first I because I think just the next year is you just play Baltimore, so uncertain. A Baltimore and a buy. Right, and then San Fran, and then San Francisco. Whoa. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I get that going to be So right. All right, so Ford there, uh, and then I got a couple of quick ones. Jordan Love was on the list last week. I think he's still creeping up a little bit. I thought he had, you know, probably his worst game so far, but found a way to get it done. Obviously, Carr injured there. Maybe might have sparked a little bit of a comeback. Um, game-winning field goal, Saints miss it, but Love good when he needed to be good, you know, and, and the rushing upside's there. So I think he's still going up up the charts a little bit, not – not terribly scared off from Bad love. completion percentage. We love love around here. Um, no hate. Love um, love. Deshaun Watson, I thought, had his best game as a Brown. So, you know, kind of just maybe not quite moving up, but at least holding, holding steady. steady. Um, making you that, you know, making you feel a little more reassured from the Pittsburgh game where I don't think anybody really played well that they were talking about on the broadcast this last game of how Kenny Pickett said that was the most physical game he had ever been a part of. I think, you know, that's just what it is in those AFC North Mm -hmm. matchups. And both of those teams have ridiculous D lines really bad, though, on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, his rushing upside kept him right in there and he wasn't a bad fantasy play. He Uh, started off rough in this Tennessee game, but turned it around. And the only people who are feeling good about this is Cleveland for that contract that they gave him. Mm-hmm. Because if he started that same trend that he did over the first two weeks, I mean, it's like full on alarms. Like, are we yeah. playing DTR? Like, what are well, we doing? Well, I can, I can, I can give you the first week. You're in the pouring rain. Nothing goes on. And then the second week, you hope it was a little better. But I mean, again, that was that's Pittsburgh in an AFC matchup. I don't think Cleveland's won in Pittsburgh in a really long time. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's just, that's kind of how those fucking games go. Now we get another game and you finally get, you know, you get to see kind of what, what it is there. I, I thought he was sharp. So he, I think he holds sir for you. Stroud, uh, we'll talk a little bit more him on the rookie report. And I think tank tank Dell, uh, who we mentioned as a, as a buy last week. Um, and you know, uh, the, the window's closing there for sure. Uh, and then a little Zach Moss. Definitely rising up. So what do you do with a guy like Zach Moss? We maybe have JT coming back. We maybe don't have JT coming back. Is if you could sell him to the JT owner and get out from under him, do you do you make a move and do that? Or do you just hope JT doesn't come back and say, fuck it, I I you know, I, damn, you know, Moss is out there again, <laughs> one of the nobodies who's getting your fantasy points in your lineup right now. So w- thoughts real quick on that. It's tough, man, because we're dealing with a, a really terrible situation between JT and just Jim Irsay. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. w- what is what is he going to do? I've heard no buzz on his motivation to come back on the field. Uh, I mean, I thought the injury came out of nowhere for him. Uh, I mean, he wanted out. They said they'd request a trade, gave him a timeline, timeline passed, and then they're still saying they'll entertain a trade. I think there's still something there that they're going to try to move him, but I'm – 100% moving Zach Moss. Like, I, I am definitely shipping him if I can get a, a good amount for him. But, I mean, if he's somebody that you absolutely have to start, then you can't come off of him. The RB landscape is a, is a hellscape this year, it seems. So, right. uh, yeah, I mean, Zach Moss, I, I, I think I'm still going to – two twos, I think I'd probably ship him. I think JT oh, does for sure. Play. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. One, two? Yeah. 
Well, I mean, one, two even seems like found money. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. It seems like it would be. I, I think that with the RB landscape, you can maybe get like a tiny piece with it. To, I, I think that you could just try to capitalize as much as you can on Zach Moss right now, just because his utilization is so good. The old uh, two and the four. <laughs> yeah. Something like, you know what I mean? Just something I could use as a trade piece in future trades. Right. All right. And then, you know, Josh Dobbs coming out there in a super flex manner and, and making himself be relevant. Super flexual. Super flexual. Oh God. I mean, that's that's probably a nothing there. I don't know what you can really even do with that. Uh, but, you know, definitely rising up the ranks there and, and given given the Cardinals, you know, a reason to stay in it and giving you hope for Kyler. If you're a Kyler owner to uh, come back and, and man, this offense kind of looks fun with Dobbs. Uh, Kyler's got me kind of excited. I mean, Hollywood has been good with Dobbs. Michael Wilson's making plays out there. R Rondell on, on, a, on a handoff had a big play. Connor looks great. The offensive line doesn't look bad. Defense is playing good, man. It's, nobody told the Cardinals they stink uh, and that they're that they're tanking for Caleb Williams. So. Uh, you know, I don't know that you could do anything for Dobbs, but I mean, he's he's damn he's startable if you need him. Before the season, I traded P Ryan for him. Nice, nice to get you a little starter. I mean, the Jets could fucking would love to have Josh Dobbs right now. Yeah. It's crazy to me that you probably felt really bad about that to start, yeah, and now feel so good. Right? I was I had I had Kyler on that team, so oh, there you go. Okay, so it was a desperation move. Yeah. Yeah, but it paid off, man. Those are it the did. best ones. It did. All right, let's switch to the faller side of this thing. 